Hello everyone, today is day 22 of our 30 day watercolor flower series and today we are painting peonies. We're going to sketch the peony first so we have an idea of how we want to paint it on our watercolor paper. Since we've already painted roses, I'm going to compare peonies to them for a second. So peonies are fuller, they have more flower petals, and their petals are more ruffly than roses. We're going to paint them in a similar way where we're layering the petals kind of into each other, uh, but they're going to be a little bit more connected and rough around the edges. I start with a few center petals that are thick and kind of tucked in and then once everything is dry we'll go back in and paint the yellow stamen for the center. I like to finish off peonies with big petals around the outside to give it a full feel. Then we'll do a simple stem and peonies have really rough and textured leaves. We're going to pick up some of our Opera Rose in a really light wash. So we want to make sure it's pretty watery at this point. We want to start with our lightest tone first. I'm going to be totally honest, painting peonies is tricky. So just keep in mind that the flower as a whole is a cone. So all of your petals are going to need to come down to one singular point or up, depending on which direction you're painting the petal. So right now I am painting all of these petals with very rough edges, um, keeping circular curved motions in mind and bringing the points, the end of these petals to that imagined point of the cone. So I've painted some petals in the front and then I've painted some petals in the back, leaving that center open for the yellow stamen we are going to add later. And you'll see that a lot of the style of painting this peony is not having everything connected. So a lot of those back petals are kind of choppy. I will blend them in together later. I've got some lighter areas and some darker areas, but make sure you're maintaining some of your white space but then also blending some areas together. And then as I'm painting, I will lift some paint out and then put some paint back in. And I start to create layers on top of each other within those shapes that I'm creating. So they have depth and it looks like there's layers tucked in under each other without having to necessarily paint another layer on top. So as you're coming towards the front of your flower, which is down towards the bottom of this peony you've painted, the petals are going to be bigger and fuller. Remember to keep that roughly edge. I'm maintaining white space in some areas and then I'm going to blend some spots together. And then the petals that I continue to paint along the back are going to be really thin shapes. As long as you're keeping those proportions accurate, you're maintaining some white space, you've got roughly edges, this will go really well for you. It takes a lot of practice. Um, and then I'm going to pick up some darker concentration of that Opera Rose, which just means less water, more straight from the palette, and add tiny little areas of shadowing to continue my illusion of depth within the peony. In my opinion, what makes this flower so great is you can pick up pigment to add a highlight, like right here, you can add pigment back in. Picking up pigment, adding pigment back in, in light tones, medium tones, and darker tones is what gives this flower a lot of depth and the illusion that there are lots of petals here together. They're all roughly and folded in together. So just continue to play around with that idea of removing some of the paint and adding some of the paint back in, especially while it's all still a little bit wet. It's also very easy to overpaint this flower. So at some point when you feel like you've got enough petals and you've created the depth, just stop <laughs> and start working on the greenery. Um, you can always come back and add more petals. So we are mixing up some sap green with some yellow to get this bright, beautiful green color. I'm placing in just a really simple stem. I kept mine short so I wasn't going too close to the end of the paper. And then I'm just bringing my brush down in different variations of pressure, heavy pressure for more of the shape of the leaf, and then light pressure towards 
the tip of the leaf and the pointed edges. I decided that the peony is very textural and kind of busy by nature because it's so full and packed with flower petals that I am just going to keep the greenery very simple, do a little bit of extra sap green here while it's still wet for some shading and depth, but I didn't want to add um, too much texture down on the leaves. I wanted to keep them a little bit more basic this time around, so I felt like it matched the flower. It lets the petals of the peony be the star of the show. <laughs> Um, now I'm cleaning my brush really well so there is no green in my yellow. I'm picking up my darker yellow color, my gamboge, mixing it a little bit with orange and tapping it in that open space we left for the stamen of the peony. Now I'm just doing dots, um, tapping it around there. It kind of overlaps with the pink and makes that beautiful yellow orange color and variation. I love it so much. And then I'm going to bring a little tiny line from those dots down into that center with just the very light pressure tip of my brush and the peony is finished. That was it. So it's a little bit complicated in some ways, but easy in other ways. Everyone always asks me to show them how to paint the peony. And I'm always like, are you, are you ready for it? Cause it's, <laughs> It's a fun one that can be a little rough. I love peonies though, and I think it is the perfect addition to our watercolor flower guide. Big, beautiful, textural, can't get any better. Thank you for being here for day 22. I'll see you tomorrow for day 23. Bye.